Hey guys, it's Sarah Ripple here once again with your Facebook Live quarantine workout tip of the day. I'm trying to do these almost every day. Um, so today what I wanted to do was, oh, and Bobo says hi. Hello. Your daily Bobo, your daily dose of Bobo. I suggest you do at least one rep every day <laughs> for good health. Oh. We think we, I need to start charging for Bobo. Bobo tisses. Um, but anyway, what we're going to do today is talk about an exercise that's called the Turkish getup. Okay, so this is an exercise that I feel could be beneficial for many of y'all out there. A, because it can be done with body weight by itself. You don't need to load this movement. B, um, because it's, it's going to provide an in, like a, a plethora of uh, variations for you. So you can work with the entire movement or you can break it down into little chunks. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. C, it's going to allow you to kind of work on uh, mobility of the hips and T-spine, as well as stability through the core, hips, um, shoulder girdle, all that good stuff. So we're gonna be able to work total body, mobility and stability. And then D, I think it's D, um, it'll also give you a conditioning effect if you apply it in that manner. So I'm gonna show you kind of how to tweak it, how to uh, strategize using it for different uh, applications, I guess you could say, and we'll rock and roll with it. So let's take it over to the floor. Um, if you're asking what the hell is a Turkish getup, I'm going to show you right now. Yeah, so, what's, what's Turkish about it? You know, I don't even know how they know Hi, that it's Lindsay. actually. Lindsay, which, um, which Lindsay is it? Oh, oh, workout Lindsay. What's up? So I know Lindsay loves these. Okay, so right. since I have Lindsay on here. Um, Lindsay calls like Lindsay would prefer to do what she calls a get down instead of a, a get Turkish up. Get down. So you can do this in the reverse as well. So let's do let's show a get down. So essentially what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show how this can be done with body weight, but then in addition, I like to use sandbags in here on the shoulder. I also like to go with kettlebells overhead. Yes, you can go with a dumbbell or any or, sort of other weighted implement, but a kettlebell I feel is a better option. Lindsay said no, <laughs> lol. <laughs> So yeah, so the Lindsay get down would be something a little bit like this. So we're gonna raise one arm overhead like the Statue of Liberty. We are going to take the opposite leg back into a lunge, go to half kneeling. We are going to kick this back leg, kind of swivel it, side bend, plant the hand. We're gonna grip the floor with the hand and then we're gonna bring the leg through to the seated position. And then we're gonna kind of roll ourselves onto the elbow and then back onto our back. So that would be a get down. So then for the get up, it's obviously the reverse. Okay, and then the full movement would include the getting back down part. Okay, so what's neat about that big, and I wish workout Shannon from back in the boot camp days was watching because she hates these. There's too many steps. <laughs> um, so here's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break it down for you guys. Um, we'll just work with body weight right now. So if you're at home, go with body weight, you're gonna pretend that you're holding a weight, okay? So I want y'all to make a fist and essentially the goal, so if you have weight in this hand, it's gonna pull this shoulder back into the socket. So that's called packing the shoulder. That's a very a safe, solid position for the shoulder. If you don't have weight, you could theoretically probably go here, but we don't want to do that. So you want to think about packing the shoulder down. I'm thinking about squeezing my shoulder blades together, kind of against the floor right here. So setup wise, we want this arm to always be vertical. Again, I'm going to show how it can be done with a sandbag, which would be here, but we're going to start with this version here. So this same side leg is bent. The foot is planted flat. We don't want the needle to flop in. We want it to be active there. And then we're going to take this other leg kind of slightly out from midline. So instead of it just being here. Yeah, we're to, to help you kind of anchor. Yeah. So Shannon always has good, you've got good little tips and stuff. So this other arm, we're going to take it, instead of it being straight out from the shoulder, slide it down to about a 45-ish degree angle, somewhere between straight out and 45. Flat on the floor, okay? So then what we're going to do is we're going to initiate the rep by taking a nice big breath. And then I want to think about pushing through this left foot as well as this right heel as I exhale and I'm going to roll. So once I'm in this first position, 
this is the first step, okay? So y'all could basically, this is called, I call it a baby get up. You're gonna roll onto this forearm. I'm gripping the ground with this hand. This entire forearm is pushing away from the ground. So what you don't wanna do here is extend this shoulder here, nor do you wanna collapse into this downside shoulder. Be like pushing away from the floor the whole time. This knee is up, okay, it's not flopped in. So from here, we would just reverse it and try to roll it smoothly back to the floor. So you could just stay with this, this segment. That's if right you're here. just doing this one well, segment. What happens is when we take all the pieces and put them together, mm -hmm. each of the components, uh, what's the right, uh, each, the mechanics for each of the components still apply to the whole ah, thing. Ah, gotcha, okay. Um, you can kind of breeze through any of these and kind of sloppily do it, you know. You probably aren't going to hurt yourself, but it's like, why? Like, yeah, you're not getting the benefit. Exactly. And I've said that a gazillion times on stuff. So, yeah, you can just do reps of baby get up and then come back down. Okay. So, the reason, if you notice, I'm staring at my fist the whole time. If you've got weight in this arm, you don't want to be looking over here and taking your focus away from it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, that's important. When we do the sandbag version, what's neat about that to compare to the kettlebell loaded or whatever loaded is that with the sandbag here, you can actually initiate the roll by rotating the head and looking this way because you don't have the weight up here to contend with. It's part of your body. Right. And I actually like that better because it's a smoother kind of movement. Um, kind of like the rolling you did the other day. Yeah. Right? You use your head. Exactly. So this kind of ties in with the rolling. That's a good point. Um, we're like, if we're talking like basic human movement, you're getting a lot of those kind of innate movement patterns in this one exercise so it's it's just a lot of good stuff we got core again hip mobility t-spine stability and mobility hip, hip stability as well so yeah so that's the baby get up would be that first step if we carried it a step further and go to here to the hand that's called i call it the it's a turkish get up to uh tall sit or post position is what we call it so essentially you're going from this baby get up right here and you're just sliding the hand towards your body that's the the addition onto that baby get up so then from there you would just step yourself back through and go backwards okay so the tall sit would be here so we could take that a step further and go the high hips which is essentially a bridge and then reverse the movement and step it through and go that way so baby get up post high hips and then go backwards okay so typically i will work with those three variations in addition to this last one which is going to the half kneel so a half get up is what i call it so we swing the leg through to this kind of side bend half kneeling position and then from here we use a lot of good stuff through the side of the torso to essentially pull us up so that would be a half get up. Let me just reverse it, control it back to the floor. I'm off my mat. <laughs> so I think I've broken that down sufficiently without getting too crazy um, and out of control. If we're loading it, so like I said, you could use a dumbbell, you could use a barbell, even just be aware of your surroundings. If <laughs> yeah. you're with a seven foot bar, that's gonna, it'll start pivoting, right? Um, people will do this with like stupid human tricks, like with a small person, like dudes will oh, yeah. YouTube it. Um, I'm going to give y'all a challenge at the end of this video because Shannon brought up challenges and she knows how much mm -hmm. I hate. Now, if you're out there doing challenges, I don't want to sound like I'm poo-pooing on you. I just think it's pointless to have to get to a hundred squats in 30 days. I think it's silly, yeah. but if it rocks your socks, then who am I to judge, right? So if we're loading the movement, I'm going to show this side. So I guess the proper way to explain this is to, if you've got a kettlebell, the traditional way of doing it is that you would start by laying on your side, you would put your hand through the handle, and you would kind of roll here first, mm -hmm. and then from there we would set up. So the neat thing about having the kettlebell for this exercise is that the weight is on the back of your wrist. So it, it helps pull the shoulder open, and it just promotes a lot better um, overall kind of performance, I believe, when doing this movement. 
Like I said, you don't have to have a kettlebell. I just prefer it or a sandbag for this. So we're trying to keep the bell as still as possible while we're moving, essentially moving underneath it. And I'm staring at it the whole time. So that's full get up. Yeah, so the, just going through the full get up. So like I said, y'all can work with any of those steps. Go through a baby get up with loaded. You can even take yourself all the way through to half get up. And then from here, do what I call a half kneeling windmill, which is essentially just going here. Okay, so you can kind of focus on obliques, lateral hips, a lot of good stuff. So what you'll notice is when I do this, I'm not going back. Mm -hmm. It's directly to the side. So it's kind of neat because I kind of spiral underneath the bell that way. So you think that's enough for that one? Yeah. Okay. Let me that's what I, what I noticed with these is it looks like simple, but then yet it doesn't. Exactly. And when you do them, it, it's, yeah, you have to take each step. I would recommend start practice each step like a few times, oh, like, totally. like you were saying, because totally. when you first do it, it's kind of awkward, totally. but you have to be really methodical and don't it, rush them. Exactly. It's quality over quantity. So some of my strategies with clients in using the Turkish get up. So I remember back in the day having my boot campers do one entire workout. So roughly an hour where we just did Turkish get ups. So what I did was I basically started with the, the baby get up. We worked on just that for, I think I just had them work for timed intervals. So maybe five minutes um, alternating sides or however did it, I don't remember, but we just worked on that one chunk for, for X amount of minutes. Then we added the next step. So we worked on each of the, and we kind of built up to the full fledged movement at the end. And that was great because like I said, you're hitting a lot of good stuff with this, um, but it's also skills practice. So you're going to get a workout when you do mm -hmm. it, but it's also making you think. <laughs> Lindsay just said an hour of Turkish get up. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When, when we're back in here working out, like yeah. she's going to be worried about that. <laughs> I wouldn't do that exactly the same way again, but I'm not saying that I won't have us be doing more. Yeah. Um, just because it's kind of one of those things like we, we do them in here, but it's one of those things that I wish you could do this every day basically and it's one of those exercises where you kind of get a lot of, out of just one thing yeah so um not so to yeah. tangent but didn't we wasn't there something about like being out of being able to get up off the floor oh yeah so something? that's yeah very see the <laughs> camera the camera woman has the best question so yeah so <laughs> they did a study i don't it, it was probably i heard of it roughly five years ago um and i found out about it through dan john he's one of my favorite strength coaches but basically, like, they did the study where they were able to link mortality risk with your ability to get up off the ground. So I don't specifically remember all things, but it's basically like if you were laying on the floor, there's a certain way of counting how many points you would get. Like if you have to, have to put your hand down to push up. So if you can get up off the ground without using your hands, essentially, then that's good. Um, so y'all could Google that and look into it more if you're curious but yes being able to get up off the ground is a super important thing um i remember years ago i worked with an elderly couple um i say elderly but they were in their 70s that doesn't seem elderly but anyway um that was one of the things that i was working on with them because you know they i remember the wife telling me like she just wanted to be able to get down the floor and play with her grandkids oh, yeah. and not have to worry about you know right. getting back up I get in up? my head I was like, you know, when you're 30 something, you're like, you don't think about that. And yeah. as a trainer and someone who's in shape, but it really is a big deal for all of us, mm -hmm. but especially for, you know, deconditioned people. So yeah, like it seems really simple. But it's really important. Right. So, um, so yeah, you can chunk it and work with the little, uh, steps just to kind of practice it. Um, but then what we could do is we could also take like a five minute block and you could alternate sides and just do it for five minutes or 10 minutes or whatever. The other day I did it at the end of my workout um, and I alternated sides and I did five on a side and it took me three minutes. I timed myself and I was trying to do them with deliberate intent, like not trying to rush through it. I was moving through it, but I wasn't trying to be sloppy or like I wasn't moving fast at the expense of like hitting each position. Yeah. 
I like to, to kind of pause at each step, just kind of lock it in. So let me show y'all um, the sandbag variation. So if y'all have anything at home, I know a lot of y'all don't have these. Um, you check out the Ultimate Sandbags website though because y'all can order some right now for use at home. My clients know I love these suckers. I love the DDRT system. I love everything that they put out. I think it's a great training modality. What if you had like a giant, you know, we had that giant bag of rice. Right. You could, I was going to say, you could fill like a duffel bag, bags of oh, rice. Yeah. Some of my sandbags are, fill, are filled with rice instead of sand because it gives you a little bit different density. Um, but you could take a pillowcase and maybe, I mean, this is 10 pounds, okay? So for oh, the hey, guests, Lena. Dina? Lena sent oh, a heart. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, you could get creative, backpack, duffel bag, whatever. Um, small, small dog. Child. Yeah, I'd say small dog or child, <laughs> yeah. but not really. So you're going to kind of shoulder it. So essentially you can grab onto it. I'm laying on the floor, so it's, it's obviously not draped on the back side of my shoulder right now. <clears throat> but you can get the idea, like when I sit up, I can kind of shift it. So this gives a little bit, okay, so I'll hold up. First thing we want to do is rotate the neck and then go through the roll that way. And then we can kind of, it's the same kind of sequence as with held overhead, mm -hmm. but shoulders. So it's a little bit different kind of a training effect because the weight is essentially made part of our body and we don't have it externally away from us. So you can, you can load it a little bit more. Um, you don't have to contend with the weight having to stabilize. There's benefit to that. So don't get me wrong. That's a great thing for the shoulder and all that good stuff. But just as something different, um, having it shouldered gives you a little bit uh, different way of kind of doing things. We could also throw in, and I like to do these better with the sandbag. I don't really like to do these with the kettlebell. From this tall set, what we could do is let what's called leg threading. You can take the leg and instead of going to the half kneel, we can oh, pull yeah. it through like that, okay? And then come back to the set. So you could alternate. So I'm gripping the floor with my hand. I'm pushing away the whole time. Plant that leg. So you can see how it's like from point A, smooth transition, I can't tell, <laughs> transition to point B. It matters, okay, not only does your setup matter or where you start and finish, but also how you get there, right? So if you're kind of going from point A to B and like, you know, try to make it smooth and with purpose, you know what I'm saying? Ooh, my butt, <laughs> got me. Um, so yeah, so conditioning wise, if you were to do a strategy like alternating sides for five minutes or X amount of reps, you will find that it gets your heart rate up. And it's a very simple way of getting in some good conditioning mm -hmm. with a thoughtful movement, but one that doesn't require a ton of technical proficiency, yeah. like an Olympic lift or something like that. I know. I feel like every time we get on the ground and get back up, I'm like, whee. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> if, if, if Shan probably knows this, but inchworms, but nine burpees. Like when I design conditioning circuits, like I purposefully like will have them do something that's a little bit more of a heart rate getter upper with like a plank or something like that. Y'all will alternate between those. Yeah. Cause y'all have to get up and down. Right. And the plank lets you rest. Right. But that up and down off the floor action is like. Yeah. Yeah. It's a doozy. I like it. So. So yeah. So the challenge. Oh yeah. We'll, we'll get to that and then we'll wrap this up. Challenge for y'all is. And I'm I, don't, I can't promise you that I'm going to be able to do it. Oh, great. So. <laughs> and y'all are expected to do it. Oh, you can take your shoe. Ah. I've also used a yoga block in here. If you want to get really crunk, <laughs> you can take a glass of water. Okay. <laughs> People are going to like knock if their teeth want, out. Uh, if, if Casey Hill's watching, you and Rochelle can do beer. Yeah. <laughs> okay, don't spill it though. So you can do with your shoe because it's going to make you like focus and think about every single step that you're going through. Oh. Okay. So you're going slow and steady. Yeah, it makes you slow down. Yeah. So just like I was telling Wendy, one of my clients this morning during our training session via FaceTime was, I know for her because she's a very driven person, same as me, like pretty much any time that you can make somebody slow down and do things, they're gonna like feel things more and get more out of it. So it's yeah. just making you kind of tune back in um, and be more aware of kind of those subtle bobbles or you know wobbles when you move. 
The yeah. bobble wobbles. Bobble wobbles. But yeah, that's y'all's challenge. So see if y'all can do that. Um, feel free to tag me in a video if you do. Um, if you feel like doing the human get up, then <laughs> go right ahead. Social distance though. Right. So if you've got somebody tiny enough to Ripple like Effect beer, Fitness is not liable for any spilled beer. Right. I'll have Drop children. Lawyer, I'll give you my lawyer's number to go through all that mumbo jumbo. But yeah, I'm not liable for your, your dipshittery. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so y'all could do, um, you know, at a minimum, I would say do like five Turkish get-ups on a side, alternating every day, um, just to kind of get moving and get loose and like get fired up for your day of quarantining or... <laughs> working from home and or what have you have the kids do it um again it's a movement that hits everything and it, it makes you think so that's you know what could be better than that right holla all right so let's go we need a little bobin's rap song oh we'll lay on the floor with bobo, bobo. can you get this up? is what most of my clients do when they come in here this is exactly what they this do is like they're warm he up. misses it he misses you guys so much but this is exactly what they do. Bobo, say bye. <laughs> Thank y'all for tuning in.